What's up, peasants? I mean, cousins. So, um, I had a question from Cam Cole. Uh, so the question was, do you have any experience with coordinator pattern or Viper architecture? Uh, what do you think about separating navigation slash navigation logic into a router or coordinator? Everyone, everyone else is only talking about MVP, MVVM, MVI, and no one is talking about other architectures and problems that can be solved. So uh, one correction there, I have actually been saying for like two years now that you pretty much shouldn't assume that every feature of your application or every project can be separated into just three layers. That's a very naive assumption, one that I used to hold on to, but you know, eventually I figured it out. Uh, and I'm not trying to sound mean saying that, but let me explain what I mean here. So. Most people I talk to don't understand the purpose of a three-layer architecture or even where the idea comes from. I'm going to link to a video in the description box down below where I answer those questions in detail, uh, but here I'm going to focus on going beyond three-tier architectures. So my current approach to software architecture is driven by two things. Number one, the knowledge and experience I have gained in implementing all different kinds of styles, and my ability to understand the requirements of the project or feature that I am currently writing. So this is really important. I do not use the same architecture for every GUI feature I'm writing, even within the same application. It depends on what that particular feature needs. Lately, it usually looks something like this. Oh, I screwed that up. Let's try that again. Something like this. I swear I know what left and right is. Now, it's not that I'm trying to follow some kind of set formula like you see here. Really, what I'm doing is I'm just constantly asking the question, should this code be separated into another object? Does it make sense to do that? Does it solve problems to do that? Does it create more problems to do that? And answering those questions will change depending on what feature you're building. Now, to return to your question specifically, um, I do think separating navigation logic into a router or coordinator can be a good idea. I have looked at Viper architecture, and at one point I actually implemented something which looked almost identical to it, and I got accused of using it, even though I hadn't even heard of the architecture at that particular point. So. Where these patterns like Coordinator and Viper come from are from people like me who don't assume that every GUI feature can be sensibly divided into uh, three objects alone. Now, I believe the reason why most people don't talk about these kinds of architectures is they haven't acquired or don't want to put the work in in order to understand how project requirements actually shapes the architecture. Now, if you want to get that experience, you probably have to do what I do, which is to try a whole bunch of different architectures and to just ask really critical questions about what you like in this particular architecture or what you hate about this particular architecture. Now, um, here's a couple of general tips that I'll throw at you, and this is the kind of knowledge that you'll eventually get. So, um, if you're doing MVVM and your view models or views are full of presentation logic, you will probably, and I say probably, have better separation of concerns by adding in a presenter, and then you've got four objects. Conversely, if you are doing MVP, um, and you feel like you either need the view or the presenter to store some of the data necessary to render the view, uh, you will probably have better separation of concerns and performance if you add in a view model. If all of your interactors or use cases just make single calls to a repository interface, you probably don't need interactors or use cases because in that specific situation, your use cases or interactors are a completely unnecessary extra layer of abstraction. So again, what I am pointing to with those tips is that a real good software architect doesn't pick a single approach and then blindly follow it regardless of the situation. Like Bruce Lee said, be like Walter, my friend. Look at the feature you are building and just keep asking that simple question. Does it make sense for this code to be here or should I try and separate it into another object? Does doing that reduce code redundancy? Uh, does it solve problems? Does it create problems? And all of those kinds of things will change depending on what you're actually building. So in other words, Try lots of different styles, pick and choose what you like from each of them, and then let the project requirements 
guide the end result. If you enjoyed that video, please do me a favor, hit the like button down below and consider checking out my course on the fundamentals of software architecture and object-oriented program design. Yes, it is in Java, but these are skills that you can learn and apply in any object-oriented programming language, and I go into a lot of detail about these kinds of topics in it. So do consider checking it out. Thanks for watching, and peace out.